Nice little surprise from Hasselblad today. They announced a new lens that was not on any roadmap. We now have the Hasselblad XCD 445P. The P stands for portable, and this lens will actually replace the previous 45mm, which was the f3.5 lens. This lens is outstanding. I've actually had the opportunity to be using it under non-disclosure for the last couple weeks, and so I want to share some of my images with you today. This lens is quite compact. It is smaller than the previous 45mm. It's also sharper. It's got better bokeh. It's got nearly silent operation in both autofocus and the actual shutter sound. There is no focus by wire. It's an actual focus ring. And best of all, it's affordable. I think this is a massive step forward in the XCD system because it makes it more accessible and it's really a much better lens. So I want to dive down, look at some images. I want to discuss it a little bit, but first I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at Skillshare. So it's a whole new year and it's time to explore new skills and get lost in creativity. Well, Skillshare's online courses are here for you. What you find might just surprise and inspire you. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so that you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Whether it's video, photography, or any other creative field, Skillshare have classes for everyone. Give an example here. This is a class that I've been looking at called Outdoor Photography, shooting at sunset, sunrise, and night, which is Taught by Chris Burkhart, who is pretty much an Instagram rock star, incredible lifestyle landscape photographer. This has a really awesome way of breaking it down and showing you all the basics of landscape photography. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So click the link in the description and get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. Go get inspired. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode of The Art of photography. The XCD 445P is actually a redesign, not only optically, but also mechanically from the original. Now, the original was an f3.5 lens. I like that lens quite a bit. It's been kind of my go-to on the X1D. I like the fact that it's a 35 millimeter equivalent, so it's a really nice carry around lens. It's really versatile. But we got a major optic upgrade in the new lens. Now, you can see that the original lens had nine elements in seven groups. We have a slight redesign with that, but we have added two aspherical elements, and the upgrade in quality is massive. So if we look at the MTF charts, if you don't know how to read MTF charts, I have a whole video on that. I will put a link in the description as well as in the corner above. But basically what we're looking at is three different readings on each lens. The original 3.5 is on the left. The F4 lens is on the right. These line pairs are taken at 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, and 30 millimeter line pairs. And so you can see that in the original lens, there's a little bit of astigmatism at the corners. It's really not that bad. That was a really good lens, but everything is much tighter in the new 445. P. And of course, Hasselblad provides MTFs taken at f8 as well. And you can see that this lens is very sharp with very outstanding performance. There's also been quite a few physical upgrades to this lens as well. As I mentioned, this lens is not focused by wire. So if you like to critical focus and you like the feel of a manual focus ring, you can do that on this lens. The autofocus is actually very fast. It's actually way better than the original version of this lens. And it's also quiet. If you've ever used the original 45 millimeter lens, that was the first lens that Hasselblad did for the XCD system. It's kind kind of noisy. There's a lot of shutter sounds because the shutter's inside the lens. This one is pretty quiet. In fact, it's just near silent. Of course, all this stuff is really awesome, but more importantly, I want to look at some images. So if we go over to Lightroom here, I'm going to open up a few to show you. First of all, let's just pick a landscape here of downtown Fort Worth. This was shot with the new 45P, and you can see that if we zoom in, it is very sharp. So we retain all the detail you would expect out of medium format, but most importantly, especially out of a compact lens, is if we go over to the Corners. And you can see that edge to edge sharpness, there's still an enormous amount of detail here. There really is no fall off. There is a little bit of light fall off on the lens and that's to be expected. But of course, that's all corrected with Lightroom or Focus or whatever software you're using. But anyway, we have outstanding edge to edge sharpness and detail. Another thing that is important is the bokeh rendering. Now, normally you wouldn't think of an F4 lens as being a bokeh machine and it's really not. It's not designed to do that. And that's really not Hasselblad's aesthetic with a lot of these lenses. However, the out of focus areas do render quite 
quite beautifully. It's never distracting. It's always very pleasing. It's kind of an understated, subtle lens, and I actually really like that. And a lot of these were shot wide open, so you can kind of see what it does as it drifts off into the back. And of course, I like to shoot this way because I kind of feel like, especially with modern lenses that have really shallow, razor thin depth of field, it's really easy to use bokeh as a crutch and actually just starting to use that as a compositional technique because it's there and it's easy. And what I like is when it's just kind of a subtle effect on your overall image. And so a lot of these images are really fun to do. Now, the big sacrifice that you will have with this lens is shooting in low light. It is only an F4, so you're going to have to use higher ISO settings if that's what you want to do or go with a different lens. It's not horrible and it is medium format, so you get a little bit better high ISO performance, but that still can be an issue. Now, this is kind of an interesting image if you want to talk about out of focus areas and what you can do with blurring stuff out, because this lens, even though it's an F4, you do have a close focusing distance of 0.35 meters or roughly 13 inches. And you can see that when I zoom away in on this padlock where the sun was hitting it, and this image is really unedited, you can see there's a little bit of purple fringing on the extreme edges. And I don't consider this to be a big deal because this is a really easy thing to fix in post-processing and whether you're using focus or using Lightroom. And so, and it's very minute even as that. The other thing that's interesting is this image, because I have my focus point on the padlock, we can see foreground bokeh as well as background. This is on a bridge, so the background is a little ways away, but it has a nice blur out. But you also see these cool spherical highlights and the way they kind of come across in these cables that go across to add to the guarding on this bridge. But anyway, kind of an interesting image to show you what the optical qualities are on this lens when you're not going for something that's just completely sharp, but what, let's say one of these other images where you do have a lot of sharpness. And the other thing too is even in these clouds, and this is a pretty high dynamic range image, you still retain a lot of detail in the highlight areas and a lot of detail in the shadow areas. So it's got an excellent micro contrast to it. This lens is also surprisingly good as a portrait lens. It's a little closer to your subject than I like to be. I prefer more of an 80 millimeter type focal length, but at 45, it's still a comfortable distance and it does really well. And again, when you zoom in and you look at the detail, this is kind of what medium format is all about in terms of rendering detail. This is my friend Maggie. You should follow her on Instagram. I will put a link to her Instagram in the show description. And this is my friend Holly, who also is an excellent photographer. You should follow her as well. But anyway, this is a really quite a nice portrait lens. We just did these kind of really quickly in natural light. One last image that I want to show you, and I think this is just kind of personifies for me what's important about the X1 and the whole XCD system is that it's small and it's portable. So this is a couple seconds long in exposure. I literally just set the camera on a rock. I didn't have a tripod or anything. I used the self timer to fire the shutter and you can get really nice motion blur and it's super portable. You don't have to lug a lot of stuff around. And this to me is one of the most important arguments for the Hasselblad XCD system. So the X1D, the XCD lenses is that it's portable. It's small. It's a mirrorless camera that shoots medium format that's really easy to carry around. And now that we we have this super portable compact lens to go with it that sacrifices nothing in terms of optical performance. In fact, it's way better than its predecessor. This makes the whole system really start to come into play, I think. Now, one of the first experiences I had with the X1D was a couple years ago when I went out to Arizona and I got up one morning and went out with a friend of mine to shoot the Grand Canyon and he brought his medium format phase one system, which is an excellent system as well. I brought the original X1D and nothing but the 45 millimeter lens. And here I am with this small camera bag I pack nothing. We just throw it in the car. We get up. We go before sunrise. I set it up on a tripod. And before I know it, I'm photographing. And it just made everything so easy without sacrificing any quality. It's portable. It's really easy to manage. I would love to know what you guys think because I think also significant about this lens is that it is affordable. And so at $1,000, give or take, actually, it's a little more than $1,000, does this make the X1D a more appealing system for you? I would love to know. This is sort of a first preview. I want to do a full more in-depth review later on when I've had more time with the lens. I just had it for two weeks on this go around and just got the images that I got. But I would love to know what you guys think. So anyway, share a comment below. Remember to like this video. And if you want to see more, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, later.